Hello LumaTouch fans. We all know that video can take up a lot of storage on our devices. This is part one of a two-part video. In part one, we'll talk about different ways of bringing media into LumaFusion and where it lives. And in part two, how to manage media and how to clean up and troubleshoot in LumaFusion. Just how big is video? There are a lot of variables, of course, but in general, video is big and only getting bigger. Remember when HD video was 1280 by 720? Most of us are now routinely shooting 4K video with frame sizes of 3840 by 2160 pixels. Here's a little comparison of two clips, both shot in Filmic Pro on the same iPhone 12. I shot the small sample on the left with a 720 resolution, and the sample on the right I shot in 4K with Dolby Vision HDR and higher quality settings. This 5 second clip takes up 8.5 megabytes for the 720p HD clip, and the 4K clip is 85 megabytes, or 10 times the size. Now that's just for 5 seconds. If you shot 10 minutes, you're dealing with storing over 100 megabytes with the smaller footage, and nearly a full gigabyte if you shot the higher quality footage. It adds up. And that's why it's so important to understand how LumaFusion handles media storage in different workflows. In this video, we're going to show six ways of getting media into LumaFusion. Number one, using the Photos app. The fastest and easiest way to access media on your device or in iCloud is to open the Photos library source in LumaFusion. LumaFusion's number one priority is the security of your footage. So when you drop a clip on the timeline, LumaFusion caches that clip and safely stores it in the LumaFusion app folder. Even if your clips are deleted from the Photos app, LumaFusion will have a secure copy to play back the timeline and edit from. If we go into the Files app, then into LumaFusion's folder, we'll see the Library Media folder, and inside that, the Photo Library folder. This is where the cached file lives. Number two, linking to a folder in the Files app. In the LumaFusion library, you can add a link to folders from other apps on your device or external USB-C drives that are connected to your device. So, for example, if you link to your Filmic Pro folder, whenever you shoot something with the Filmic camera, the clips will automatically show up in your LumaFusion library under Linked Folders in a folder called Documents. Elegant. The folder linking feature also allows you to link to folders on an external drive. With certain devices, you can edit directly from the external drive without copying media. To do that, you'll need a device with a USB-C or Thunderbolt port and a compatible drive. Check the link in the description for some more info on those requirements. Be sure external drive editing is turned on in LumaFusion's preferences, because if it's turned off, then the media will be cached rather than allowing direct editing from the drive. Just access the drive by tapping Add Link to Folder and navigating to the volume where your clips are stored on the drive. Number three, importing from external sources. Now let's talk about media you import directly into the LumaFusion library. Tap on the Import Media option at the top of the library. Here you'll find cloud storage sources such as Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive, and also drives such as wireless network drives and SanDisk iExpand. Let's import some clips. Media imported from these sources goes into the Imported Media folder in the LumaFusion library. Over in the Files app, we can find that cache media. Inside the LumaFusion volume, look for the User Media folder and navigate to your selected import source, in this case OneDrive. Here are those files we just imported. Number 4. Direct Library Integrations Sources that are directly integrated into the LumaFusion library include Frame.io, Storyblocks, Replay, and some Western digital drives. You can preview media from any of these sources without importing it. But to get the performance needed for multi-track editing, clips will be cached just like the Photos app media when they're used on the timeline. Number five, shared from another app. Another way to import media is by sharing to LumaFusion using the standard Apple share sheet. If the media is audio, video, or photo, 
you'll see LumaFusion as a destination on the share sheet when exporting from another app. Tap Share to LumaFusion to create the cached file for editing. You'll find this media in the Imported Media section of the library in a folder called Other App. Number 6. Copy media to LumaFusion's User Media folder. Media and folders located inside the Files app under On My iPad, LumaFusion, User Media will always show up in the LumaFusion imported section of the library. The folder structure as you make it in the User Media folder will be mirrored here in the imported section of the LumaFusion library. If you want to manually organize your media, you can use the Files app to save media directly into a folder inside that user media volume. That way you can name a folder to organize the project you're building. Just select the files, then tap Move, and create a new folder. You'll be able to find that new folder in your LumaFusion library under Imported. Elegant. And that covers how LumaFusion stores your media, including when and why it sometimes needs to cache the media to your device. It's empowering to know where your media lives, but it can be tempting to delete media you see taking up space on your device. And that can get you into trouble. In part two of this video, we'll look at how to get out and stay out of trouble by using LumaFusion's cleanup tool. That's it for this one. Let us know in the comments if this is helping to demystify storage on your LumaFusion edit device. Thank you for watching and happy editing.